Good morning. It's good to see you all today. You curious investors, this is for your safety. I'm going to read you the disclaimers real quick. Don't want anybody taking unnecessary risks, not only with their investment capital, but with life in general. If you wish to remain unidentified from the recording, please remove your name. We have no crystal balls, no guarantees. This is strictly our opinions. And you have the ability to lose money. Stock investing is risky. It includes fluctuations of prices and the loss of your hard-earned money. The goal of this is to help you lose less money than otherwise. So that's the goal. And then as you learn to lose less, then you'll start to make more is our intent. Uh, this is for general information. It's not specific recommendations. You have the ability to uh, check in later to get more specific ones if you need some help. Uh, these securities are offered through uh, LPL Financial, which is a member of uh, FINRA and SIPC, and that is not Gimbal. Gimbal is separate from them. I think I've covered all the, the basics with you today. Let's talk about investing. You want to do some investing talking today? All right. Uh, I want to talk about gaps today. Gaps are, uh, they're a risky part of investing and they're probably the most emotional part of investing. Uh, when you start seeing a stock do what's called a gap and um, let's uh, let me navigate to my charting software. One second All right, sorry about that delay. William O'Neill, if you're a reader, is a really good author on how to make money in stocks. That's the title of this book, and I'd encourage that to you. Uh, William O'Neill was uh, arguably one of the best investors ever. He's still alive. However, I don't think he's actively involved in investing anymore. But uh, a lot of principles that I'm going to talk about over the weeks ahead are ones that I've learned through investors like William O'Neill. And um, when you manage risk, you need to learn to realize that all the money that I put in an investment is not at risk if I use some limitations, some guardians to protect myself from the downside. And so one of the investment tools in the marketplace is called a stop loss. A stop loss um, allows you to uh, uh, put in a order in the marketplace to reduce your risk. So if the stock was trading at 100 and you didn't want it to drop below 90, um, you could put in what's called a stop loss order. And as soon as that price hits 90 or below, it'll execute what's called a market order and sell your stock at that price. And so um, it doesn't guarantee you're not going to lose more than that from 100 to 90. It just says, I'm going to stop my risk as soon as the stock starts trending against me because you can get what's called a gap that's where there's a gap in the stock price and you can't trade in that area between there and so we're going to talk about that but before you think about how much can i make in the market you just have to think what am i willing to lose and that's where you begin to manage risk wisely um, when money is being boasted about when people are talking about they're making a lot of money out there that's when it's a risky market. When people are afraid of the market, it's generally not as risky because everybody's staying away from it. So when the crowd rushes into the market, that's when you wanna be careful. And when the crowd is afraid of it, that's when you wanna be very ready to get invested in the marketplace. Um, let's look at um, a stock that, um, one of the things that O'Neill said was that all stocks are risky. And most people don't believe that. They believe their company stock that they work for isn't risky. They believe utility stocks are, are um, not risky. And they'll think a lot of things aren't risky. 
and in fact they are. Now look at this. Um, there used to be a company in Indiana called Indianapolis Power and Light Company. Utilities are the people that provide your electricity, they may pl provide your water, uh, they may pr provide your gas. Um, and, and because those things are generally needed in your household, um, they're considered a good investment, a safe investment for, for which they may or may not be. Uh, but that's what general population considers them to be. So when you look at um, this one, AES Corporation, um, if you look over to the left of your screen there, that was trading at uh, $25 a share in October of, I think that's 1999. Yeah, that's 1999. So you could have bought all you wanted for $25 a share in October of 99 of a boring utility stock, and it ran from $25 a share all the way to $73 a share. And that um, is an unusual performance for utilities. They, don't, they generally aren't that exciting and they generally don't um, provide investors that kind of rate of return. Now I'm gonna switch the date uh, one year further out and show you what happened to this company. So look at that, it was over to the left, it was $73 a share and it started trending opposite of where it was going the year before. We've talked about in the weeks past, this red line is the average price over the last 50 business days of the stock. Um, that's a good place to pay attention closely to see if you wanna get out of it. And this black line is the 200 day average price, which is basically one year. And normally what we would suggest is if your stock starts trading below this 200 day moving average, it's time to move out of it and move the money somewhere else. But look right here, you see this right here? That's, that's what's called a gap. This stock was trading, it closed the day before at $55 a share and it uh, didn't trade any higher than 52.63 the next day. That's, that's what I was talking about. Your stop order won't always get you a, a price because in that price right there where there's a gap in the trading, um, there was no shares traded and consequently uh, those, those dollars were lost. You couldn't, you couldn't have sold that. And normally when your stock starts to gap like that on the downside, it's giving you an indication that there's probably more gaps to come. Um, and in way over here to the right of the screen, um, right here, you can see it was, uh, um, maybe almost a year later, it did another gap in there where the stock didn't trade in that price range. But, but this utility stock where a lot of investors would have thought they were safe and sound went from 25 to 72. And within a year and a half later, it went reversed that completely and went all the way back below $20 a share. And some investors say, I'm a long-term investor, I'm gonna hold on to that. But that, all that money, that tripling and nearly tripling of the money they made, they lost that in, in a short period of time. And so there's reasons to manage your risk, to pay attention to what your stock price is doing and, and act accordingly. There's time to buy and there's a time to sell. And I would have suggested that any time along this black line here was probably uh, maybe right here where it dropped below it or over here where it dropped below it or here you had a chance to get out of the stock in the mid forties before it dropped all the way to the twenties. Um, let's go forward a year and show you what happened to this. Again, this was Indianapolis Power and Light Company. Look at that. It dropped not only from the 20 level, it dropped all the way over here to uh, $1.20 a share. That is risk. That's, that's how the market rolls. That's how people can get taken advantage of because they don't have risk management in place. Let's look at some stocks that have gapped and let's just talk about these two. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, another Indianapolis company, Simon Property Group, if you go to the mall, um, I'm gonna go forward to today. Uh, I don't know if you go to the mall as much lately, but the malls aren't very crowded and 
um, this stock, I'm gonna go back to last year to see where it was last year. Traded $191 a share over here. See how it came down below the 200 day right here. It gained some steam and got back above it. And then in uh, April um, of last year, it got below the 200 day and started trending downward from there. But it was 190 back in 2018. Uh, we had the financial sell off with coronavirus right here in um, the first half of this year. And this stock dropped all the way from the trading range of 140 to 150, then all the way down to 43. That's Simon Property Group. Well, if you look right here, I don't know if your eyes can see this or not, but right there, that's a gap. Right there's a gap. Right there's a gap. This is a, this stock was gapping all the way down, telling you you might want to get out of this thing. Uh, the gaps do happen on the upside. Right in there, there was a gap on the upside. It did a gap on the upside there, but it wasn't reinforcing that this stock is going back up. And the stock last week we talked about tennis balls and eggs, and this stock is definitely an egg. Um, this is one I traded earlier in the year and didn't have any success with, and uh, thankfully. Um, I got out of it long before this date right here. But if you went to bed uh, thinking you had a good stock on this one, it closed the day at $60.31 a share. It had this huge gap right here the next day. It closed at uh, $45.46 uh, a share. That's nearly a 33% loss without a chance to get out of it. And so these gaps are things that give you an indication of a stock. This stock is not one I would be willing to jump in anytime soon because of that behavior. That's what these gaps show you is that um, this stock doesn't have any major mutual funds that are kind of leading mutual funds in it. What those gaps show you is that somebody like a mutual fund is trying to get out of that stock and it's supply and demand and the supply of the stock is much greater than the demand for it. Nobody is willing to buy it, so they were just shoveling. Uh, they shoveled 22.9 million shares into the market that day, and that's not you and me trying to get rid of our stock. That's uh, a lot of institutions getting rid of it. I'll give you a couple more examples here. This this one happened this week. Uh, Vertex is a pharmaceutical company that de develops uh, treatments for cystic fibrosis, and uh, Right there, if you can see that gap where that stock price turned down there. Uh, this may be a good stock one day, but it's not a stock you want to put capital in today as it's, as it's trending away from where you want your money to be at this point in time. Um, Kimberly Clark, I think they make, um, I don't know if they make tissues and toilet paper and stuff like that. Um, yeah, disposable diapers, baby wipes, bathroom tissue and paper towels. Um, again, this one just did a gap down on Thursday. What happens, what, when you look on these charts, every 90 days, companies announce their profits. That's what these lines down here are showing you. And those days can be very risky for stockholders because the, the market reacts to those announcements very aggressively. And so, um, Kimberly Clark came in this quarter. They announced that their profits were down 7%. Even in their sales, how many diapers and toilet paper thing they sold was only up 1%. The market evidently was expecting a lot more. And again, um, that's what a gap looks like. So train your eyes to recognize a gap and to understand that they uh, can be signaling that maybe the, the end of the ride is, uh, is close for the short term. Um, Union Pacific is a railroad. It did a couple of gaps. It did one right there and it did one the next day. And so uh, again, they announced earnings and that's what caused the, share, the shares to drop dramatically. Tractor Supply Company, I don't know if you've seen those stores around. Um, Tractor Supply has been doing really well. And then it had a gap right there uh, based on their earnings again. It's 
Uh, every 90 days, companies announce profits, and that's what's called the earnings season. And we're in earnings season right now. And so this type of behavior uh, um, will occur during that time. Um, this one um, did an opposite gap. So these are the ones you prefer to be in. The stock, um, it was doing the opposite of what I showed you. This one, it's trending above its 50-day uh, moving average. The 200-day moving average is trending upward. Uh, their profits were up 70% when they announced them here. Um, and, and their revenues were up 30%. This stock closed on uh, Thursday at uh, $877 a share. Uh, it was up $173 yesterday. Um, with massive volume. This this right here, this line right here, shows you how many shareholders are trying to get into that. And this uh, this company has a number of big mutual funds that are in it. American Century, T. Rowe Price, Lord Abbott, J.P. Morgan, Fidelity Contra Fund. And those are the people that are buying in these large volumes and pushing a stock like this one up. And again, this is not a buy recommendation, just pointing out how gaps work in the stock market. Um, and as you're building a portfolio, if you've got, say, 5000 or less, you can probably build a portfolio of two stocks um, and split that money in half. But you need to know that there's risk in each half. And so uh, that's the nature of learning to invest. The money you lose today as a young investor, if you would just consider that as tuition, make notes of what you did wrong, make um uh, comments to yourself, learn principles so you don't repeat the same mistakes. That's where average investors deal. They just, they hope they get lucky. They hope they get a stock that goes up $173 in a day and they don't learn from their past and they just hope that things will work out in the future. And it just generally doesn't work that way for them. Um, so I, I would use stop losses uh, as you're beginning to invest to protect you, protect you from your emotions getting all riled up. And then I would also, um, uh, zero in on companies that are tra trending above their 200 and their 50 day average, not those that are below them. Um, here's the, here's the big one that I saw this week. Um, and this is the nature of investing. I gave you all the disclaimers earlier. Uh, this one happened uh, yesterday. Uh, this stock was trading at $5 a share over here to the left of the screen. And, um, People, it's an Israel-based company that does therapies for infectious diseases, including influenza. So the, the speculators in the marketplace evidently thought that this was a um, company that was going to have a coronavirus solution. So they ran this up from $5.20 over here in March all the way to $62 a share in July, which is a ridiculous run. Um, this company doesn't make money. That's what this line right down here shows you whether they're profitable or not. They're just losing money all the time. They had one product and that product uh, proved to be ineffective yesterday. So the stock was trading um, Thursday at close the day at 39.88 and yesterday um, uh, let's see what it opened at yesterday. First trade yesterday was at uh, um, somewhere between 360 and 440. So this stock, <laughs> this stock dropped from 38 to four dollars in a day. You can't it's so low down here. You can't even see the stock price. It's right over here. That's where the stock price is. And so it had been trading well up here, and and the investors lost 85 to 95 percent of their capital in one day. And that's why risk management is important, is that there's principles you want to put in place. You want to manage your capital so you don't have all your eggs in one basket. This would be, if you had 100% of your money in this stock, it would be a hard one to, to recover in a short period of time. It's take you a long, long time to catch up. This stock uh, is not one I would buy. I wouldn't be surprised if this one isn't even on the market anymore um, in six months. But we'll see what happens with it. But Today, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about these big spans that are called gaps, and gaps give you an indication of what's going on in a stock price. And if your stock gaps down against you, use that as an indication to stop your losses, take uh, your money and put it on the sidelines until you find a better place to put it, because gaps generally are not going to be a good indication 
uh, that you're in the right one if it's down and downward. All right, that's what I wanted to cover today. I appreciate you being a curious uh, investors. Any questions I can answer before I uh, bring this to close today? Um, so what happens if um, you know, like, uh, for example, um, like a lower stock, how do you know if like, if a stock is a good stock to buy? If like, for example, how can you compare like um, Anthem, which is like really expensive stock and um, CNO Financial or um, a much lower stock? How do you, uh, what's the price range for a good stock and a bad stock? Uh, that's a good question. Um, the, um, I'm not gonna give specific recommendations today, but I just pulled up one that you mentioned the Anthem. Um, which Anthem provides healthcare services uh, for people. And if you look down here below, they, they sh this box below, it shows you the profitability of the company, how fast the profits are growing and how fast their sales are going. And generally those are gonna be the indicators to tell you if you're fishing in the right pond and you're looking at a stock that's probably gonna have the potential to go upward. Um, the stock price is generally irrelevant. You, you um, in the 80s and 90s companies used to do what's called a stock split and if the stock got high like this one's at 300 they might do a um, like a three for one split that'd be like if you had a dollar uh, and you gave it to me and I gave you four quarters that that'd be like a four for one split you still have a dollar you just have four quarters instead of one dollar well if this one did a three for one split it'd go from the three hundred dollar range to a hundred dollar range and nothing has changed in the stock itself. Um, so the stock price isn't as important. If you, you saw this one yesterday um, that had this day, Samuel Adams, um, a lot of people would stay away from a high price stock. The stock was trading uh, right here in the, I forgot what I said, 800 and some odd dollars, $890 or so right there. And it closed yesterday at 1,091. So it did a 18% run in one day. And so stocks, Stock prices don't really matter. The higher price there, there are probably not as many people buying them, but the people that are going to buy those are going to be large institutions. And that's generally who you want to be buying the stocks you own because they're going to generally bring millions and millions, if not billions of dollars into the marketplace. Um, what you probably want to avoid are stocks that are trading below um, $10 a share. You, you, you do not generally want to buy stocks below $10 a share because um, – they don't have those institutions that are buying them. I can't think of, um, let me see that this one, that is an old stock, I don't know what it's trading at. Yeah, so so this is Megal Security Systems. It's an Israeli-based company that does security systems. Um, down here, their sales are declining. They're down 17%, 18%. Uh, you could have bought the stock at 246 over here and it's 350, but this, this is a riskier stock because of that price. So if we look over the last few months, this stock um, traded as high as 21 back in 2003. Uh, but when it hit that level, it's never traded at that price range again. And it's more likely most of the time it's traded below $6 a share. And, and so um, I would encourage you to not worry about how high priced the stock is it is but how low it is try to avoid those because they will um, tend to be more risky and, and more prone to uh, lose money for you when I when I started investing I thought I would buy low price stocks um, and that was just a good way for me to lose my money instead of going on spring break anything else also um just one more. Um, how can you regain the money that you lost if you um, lose a whole bunch of money from a stock that went down super fast? Um, well, th there's uh, basically patience and discipline is how you'll do it. Um, you, you can't um, make a lot real quickly when you're first starting to invest unless you just get lucky. And what we're trying to talk about on this weekly meeting is how to avoid being lucky, but doing things on a consistent, disciplined way so you can make that up. So if you lose, if you, if you 
choose a stock and you lose a lot on that, you need to write down everything you can learn from that loss and just call it tuition. Um, so when you're investing hundreds, if not small thousands of dollars, that'll be different than when you're investing tens of thousands that you won't make that same mistake when you have more money. But um, uh, one of the ways is to start your investing by looking for companies that are probably um, uh, not trading below that 10 or $15 level. You're generally not going to be too many stocks like the one I showed you all ago that are going to drop that much. And uh, we can talk about that in future weeks of what stocks are tend to be more uh, risky, what industries and sectors tend to be more risky for investors. Anything else? If a company goes bankrupt, um, what do they do with the stock money that um, people have poured in to pay for their stock? Um, you won't earn anything. Why don't you earn? And what does the company do with the money that you pay for that um, share of stock if you're not going to get anything back from that stock because they're bankrupt? Yeah, so uh, when I... Um, there's two types of investing in most companies. You can be a bondholder or a stockholder. The stockholder is an owner. A bondholder is a lender. Um, the riskier of those two ways of investing are the owners. And if the company goes bankrupt, you lose all your money. That's just the nature of owning a business. And, and so when you're owning publicly traded businesses, <clears throat> I think it's very seldom that you'll be still owning a stock that goes bankrupt if you use that 200 day moving average as a, just as a discipline to get out of that. If um, um, I'm trying to think of one that's recently gone bankrupt that I um, can't think of one in my in general motors went bankrupt in 2009 and their stock went to zero and all the people that own the stock lost all the money. And there's a company in the early 2000s called Enron. It did the same thing. And uh, J.C. Penney or Sears uh, were retailers that did those things. And that's that bankruptcy is the economy's way of improving itself. And the companies that go bankrupt are ones that are not using capital in a very reasonable way. And that capital is coming out of those stocks and going to companies that are uh, more wisely using the capital. It's just a cleansing way that our economy um rewards companies that are efficient and it punishes companies that are inefficient. Well, I appreciate you hanging out today. It's going to be a great day today. So I'll look forward to uh, meeting with y'all next week and feel free to uh, email me if you have questions and uh, we can uh, chat again then. And I hope you have a good rest of today. Okay.